Thank you so much. So just for the sake of time, I'll just do a very brief introduction. So just by way of background, so my background is in actually a combination of the startup world in my early career, uh, and then I actually, we sold that business to a corporate, did seven years in the corporate environment, and then more recently stepped back into uh, sort of the high growth startup world. And I have to say that when it comes to uh, employee experience, it's really interesting because the challenges of building great cultures and building really talented, high performing teams are similar. Uh, both in the startup world and in the corporate space. So I think the challenges exist regardless of the environment that you're in. And there's tremendous opportunity, you know, in terms of shared experiences and shared tools and strategies to build healthier cultures uh, more broadly. So speaking of the, the future of work, so I want to talk about four, you know, global influences that are, again, sort of cross vertical, cross uh, industry and size of organization that are really impacting the way that the work is changing. Uh, first is demographics. So I'm not gonna focus too much on demographics, because I know Sarah's gonna touch on this in, in more detail in her talk. Um, but I think what's really interesting, we've heard so much about millennials, you know, in the past few years, as we think about demographics and the way that, you know, the, the makeup or the complement of our workplaces are changing. Something that I thought was really interesting, if you think about, you know, many organizations having been built around boomers, right? Especially in the corporate space. You know, over the last few decades, these, these work organizations have been built to suit the needs and way of working of baby boomers. By 2025, baby boomers will only make up 25% of most workplaces. So the influence of the younger generations coming into the workforce uh, is beginning, going to become increasingly important and increasingly influential. So that leads me to this next component, which is around physical spaces. So in the gig economy, you know, many workers actually will not even need a physical workspace. So if you think, you know, how does that change the way that you build cultures within organizations? It is perhaps more difficult uh, for organizations to build that sense of community and culture uh, when you have many remote and mobile workers. But the reality is that's the expectation for most employees now is that they have that flexibility and they can work from anywhere, which leads us to technology. So I am probably the least expert person in this room to speak about the topic of technology, but here's what I will say. So there's been really fantastic studies done, uh, one in particular done by Deloitte uh, on the Fortune 500, so large corporates. And the, what the research is telling us is that if these organizations do not adapt, evolve, and experiment with technology, 52% of the Fortune 500 will no longer exist by 2030. So again, I think that's a pretty compelling and fascinating statistic as well as we think about the importance of technology in the day-to-day, -day, uh, both from a business perspective, but also from an employee and workplace uh, perspective. Lastly, talent. So we all know there's a tremendous talent shortage, uh, and that's becoming increasingly so for uh, specialized areas, you know, such as er engineering, product development, even sales in a lot of organizations really struggling to find very talented salespeople. 80% of HR executives are now saying that they're struggling to find talent across all roles in their organization. So if you think about these influences, you know, and how that's changing how uh, leaders and organizations are, you know, building their teams, what's becoming increasingly important is the aspect of employee experience. So employees are more empowered than ever to choose their workplaces based on, you know, that workplace's ability to suit their needs and their desires in terms of how they work. So they're looking for a number of things, right? Workers are now looking for a number of things in terms of choosing the place where they'll take their talents and where they'll focus their effort. First, flexibility. So gone are the days of nine to five, right? So I, I want to be able to not, you know, take my family and my personal interests and try and, you know, weave them into the work time that I have, but rather I'd like to choose work 
where I can integrate all aspects of my life in a meaningful way and find that balance. Mobility, uh, again, as I said, employees are now looking or workers are now looking to be able to work from anywhere. They're also looking for global mobility. So experiences that take them out of a particular office on a day-to-day -day basis, but allow them to work from anywhere. Sense of purpose. I think this one, you can't say enough about this. It goes back to the, the Simon Sinek quote of, you know, it's not what you do, it's why you do it. This is becoming increasingly important to individuals in choosing, again, where they will work and where they will dedicate their efforts. They want to feel a sense of purpose, right? We want to feel like we can actually anchor to the work that's being done and, you know, see that there's a sort of a greater objective to that work. Um, and lastly is support. And, you know, I'll touch on this a little further in a moment. But the bottom line is this need for a sense of community and a feeling of support uh, with the people that we're working with, with our colleagues, is more important than ever. So, you know, individuals don't necessarily want to kind of show up and feel, you know, isolated and not, you know, really aligned to the corporate mission and vision. Looking for a sense of community and a sense of support. So there's a, a great research study that uh, actually indicated that uh, employees now, and it is a millennial-related uh, survey, but millennials were saying, and I think this is even more so perhaps in the younger generations, 90% expect their employer to play a role in helping them to manage their health. So it's not a nice to have now, it's really a need to have for employers and organizations to think about how do we truly support all aspects of the health of the employees and the workers that are either contracted or full-time in working with us. So this point of development, um, it actually you know, reminded me of the quote, and probably many people will be familiar with it, this quote of, what if we invest our, in our employees and they leave? So it's CFO saying to CEO, CEO responding, well, what if we don't and they stay? So the bottom line here is that, you know, individuals are looking for opportunities to grow, develop, take on new projects, test and experiment out of their core skill set so that they can learn and evolve and contribute in an even greater way to the organization. So it's a bit of a win-win scenario when you think about the opportunities around developing the talent in your organization. Providing, you know, opportunities to contribute to the communities in which we work critically important as well. And I think, you know, both now and into the future, we're going to see this even more so. It goes back to people looking for that sense of purpose. You know, at League, in our organization, we um, really rallied to uh, support the Tech for Sick Kids initiative. And I can say that it was one of the meetings that we had the highest response rate to last year. So literally 85% of the employees in the company came out to see how they could get involved in supporting this amazing initiative and an organization really that was right next door to where uh, headquarters is located. Diversity and inclusion. The first thing I will say, actually, this slide was created for me. Number one, we need better stock images that show diverse, inclusive workplaces. So, I mean, I, I think this really almost speaks for itself, but what we do know is that you know, the research and the information, and Jody talked about this, on why it's so important to create diverse, inclusive workforces goes way beyond it being the right thing to do. And really, it's all about having higher performing, more successful organizations because of being more diverse and being more inclusive. So it's a business imperative. And lastly, I just want to touch on health support. And in particular, you know, given some of the recent news and focus on mental health, um, I want to touch on this piece for a moment. So many of us have probably heard the statistic that one in five individuals here in Canada anyway uh, have indicated that they've suffered from some type of mental health issue. If you look at the insurance space or health benefits in most organizations, the reality is that 40 to 50% of drug and disability claims are now coming in with a primary uh, condition that is in the mental health category. So first and foremost, anxiety and depression. So I am a huge believer that workplaces and, and leaders and organizations 
have a tremendous opportunity here. So workplaces can negatively impact the health of the population, or they can very positively impact the health of the population. And I think it's incumbent upon us as leaders to educate ourselves so that we can identify sources of strain, stress, potentially uh, signs and symptoms of mental health issues so that we could be part of the solution. It goes back to this point of community. Ultimately, many, many individuals are looking for a place to seek support. They may not feel comfortable with family and friends. They may, may actually feel more comfortable with a manager, a leader at work, or a colleague in coming forward and talking about challenges that they've had. And I think, again, it, it really goes back to leaders, managers, uh, you know, whether even founders, investors in organizations, really being able to ensure that when that happens, when an individual comes forward to their manager or their leader, that leader or manager is equipped both to have that conversation in an effective way, but also to provide resources to that individual. So I think you know, companies, whether they're three people or 30,000 people, need to be thinking about what are the resources that we can give to our employees to support both their physical health and their mental health, and then also how can we empower leaders and managers as they grow and develop within our organization to be well prepared to provide that support because sometimes for people in a time of need, it's that one conversation and that one moment where they reach out to get that support that can be life-changing. So I'm gonna end on that note. I think it's very important today and I think it will become increasingly important you know, as we move into the future as an important part of workplace culture. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah.